And there came a time known as the third millennium, a time when the people of the earth were ravaged by disease, pestilence, and poisons, a time when the horsemen of the apocalypse ran the multinational corporations, a time when America's citizens were waking up to a future of no money and no jobs. A time when a special man came forward, a man that your American taskmasters did not want you to see or hear, a man whom they took prisoner and hid away, a man whose name is Yahweh Ben Yahweh. For telling people the truth, Yahweh Ben Yahweh was taken prisoner by the minions of darkness. For giving people hope, Yahweh Ben Yahweh was led away to Golgotha. This is the continuing story of the past and of the future, about good and about evil, about your life and what it will become. A story that tells why the so-called black man of America had to suffer for over 400 years. A story of what will happen to the so-called black man if he returns to the laws, statutes, judgments, and commandments of God, you hey wav hey. Olam, shall, shall you hey wav hey. Wav, hey. The universe, the universe of, of you, you hey, hey, wow, hey. 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 Brought, brought to you, you by, by the nation, nation of you, you hey, hey, wow, hey. Hey. working for you and your future. Good or evil, life or death, this is your choice in this, the year 6002, the year of judgment. Shalom and welcome to the universe of Yahweh. My name is Josiah Israel and I am your host. For over seven years now, we have been discussing some of the things the Bible said would occur in the day of judgment. We warned you that the weather was going to change and that the powerful forces of nature were going to bring terrible destruction upon America and the world and that it was going to get worse and worse and worse. And it has. We alerted you that violence in the public schools was going to increase, and it has. We showed you in the scriptures that forewarned of wickedness in high places, and we are witnessing today gross misconduct and serious crimes being committed by some of our highest elected officials. What lies ahead for America and the world is nothing less than the proliferation of deadly diseases and plagues as foretold in the Bible. But there is hope. The Bible tells us that at the end the Messiah would be revealed, and at that time he would save the righteous from this impending destruction. That one, the Messiah, is Yahweh Ben Yahweh. So we invite you to join us in the universe of Yahweh featuring the commandments of Yahweh and the Messiah revealed. First, the commandments of Yahweh. For 6,000 years, we have been suffering at the hands of rulers who transgress the laws of yud heh wav -Heh and teach all people throughout the earth to transgress the laws of yud heh wav -Heh. In order to have peace, love, and harmony upon the earth, we must return to keeping the commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes of yud heh wav -Heh. All of us have been taught that the commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes in the Old Testament Bible do not count today. In this series, we will show you that the commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes in the Old Testament Bible do count, and that if we govern our lives according to these commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes of God yud heh wav -Heh, then we will have peace and goodwill upon the earth 
forever. We invite you to study along with us. However, in order to do so, you must have the following tools. A King James Version of the Bible, several dictionaries, the New Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, a set of encyclopedias, Hebrew and Greek lexicons, a thesaurus, and a synonym finder. Shalom, my name is Ben Kaya Bethel Yishraya. We are discussing the commandments of Yahweh. Many people believe that the first commandments were given to Moses, but the fact is the first two commandments ever given to man were given to Adam, which were to dress and to keep the Garden of Eden. We are discussing the second commandment, which was to keep the Garden of Eden. In order to bring you up to date with our discussion today, let us review some of what we discussed last week. Our main focus was on the Hebrew meaning of the word keep. We told you that keep in Hebrew is shamar, and that one of its meanings is reserve. We found out that reserve is equivalent to husband, which means master of a house. Master was described as one having control, and house was described as a household, which was defined as a family including any servants. After we carefully examined the different colors and flavors of the word control, we asserted that to reserve the Garden of Eden means that Yahweh commanded Adam to establish and impose his, Yahweh's laws and ordinances upon the family of Yahweh, including any servants who sojourned in the land. These laws and ordinances establish certain conditions and limitations for the family of Yahweh, including any servants, to govern their behavior. These laws and ordinances were to also keep the flourishing and the spread of undesirable things from happening among them. We read Numbers chapter 15, verses 15 and 16 and showed you that there is one law for all the family of Yahweh, including the stranger that sojourneth with us. We read about one such law in Leviticus chapter 11, verses 7 and 8, which forbade us from eating or even touching the swine, pig. We explained that pork meat contains 999 different worms, which cause 999 different types of diseases. We read in Isaiah chapter 24, verses 5 and 6, that because man has transgressed the laws, changed the ordinances, and broken the everlasting covenant of Yahweh, the earth is cursed, and all the people of the earth are destroyed, and only a few are left who keep the laws and ordinances of Yahweh. We stressed that the only way the people of the earth will be blessed with good health and a safe way of life is to keep the laws and ordinances of Yahweh. Today, we will continue our discussion of the second direct commandment that Yahweh gave to man, Adam, which was to keep the Garden of Eden, heaven. Referenced in the New Strong's Exhaustive Concordance of the Bible, copyright 1990, in the Hebrew Chaldee Dictionary on page 118, reference number 8104, keep in Hebrew is shamar, and another one of its meanings is sure. To keep the Garden of Eden means to sure the Garden of Eden, or to make the Garden of Eden sure. Let us find out what the word sure means, and then show its relationship to keep and the Garden of Eden. 
According to Thorndike Barnhart Jr. Dictionary, copyright 1997, on page 868, sure means free from doubt. On page 346, free from means lacking. Documented in the Oxford Study Dictionary, copyright 1991, on page 205, doubt means an uncertain state of affairs. Thus, to sure the Garden of Eden, Yahweh commanded Adam to make it a place lacking or not having an uncertain state of affairs. Before we can explain how Adam was to do this, let us first describe the state of affairs of the Garden of Eden. On the authority of the Oxford Study Dictionary, on page 676, state is defined as the quality of a thing's characteristics. The root word of characteristic is character. On page 112, character is defined as moral strength. On page 11, affairs means public or private business. Some synonyms for affairs are activities, undertakings, and transactions. From these facts, we can deduce that Yahweh commanded Adam to make sure that all public or private activities, undertakings, transactions, and businesses operating or taking place in the Garden of Eden were not lacking in moral strength. How was Adam to do this? Psalm chapter 112 verse 5 gives us one answer, and it reads, A good man showeth favor and lendeth. He will guide his affairs with discretion. In accordance with Webster's Ninth New Collegiate Dictionary, copyright 1989, page 362, discretion means ability to make responsible decisions. Discretion, the ability to make responsible decisions, would preserve the Garden of Eden, according to Proverbs chapter 2, verse 11, which reads in part, Discretion shall preserve thee. Being able to make responsible decisions would preserve the Garden of Eden. Let us journey even further into the insides of the word sure. Stated in the Synonym Finder by J.I. Rodale, copyright 1978, on page 1198, Sure is synonymous to firm. Webster's New World Dictionary, Third College Edition, copyright 1994, on page 509 states, the Indo-European base of the word firm is der, D-H-E-R, meaning to hold or support. Whence is derived from the sans word dharma, D-H-A-R-M-A, -A, meaning precept or law. On the authority of Webster's Ninth New Collegiate Dictionary, on page 925, precept is defined as a command or principle intended as a general rule of action. A preceptor is a teacher or tutor. In order for Adam to ensure that all activities, undertakings, transactions, and businesses, whether public or private, operating or taking place in the Garden of Eden, were not lacking in moral strength, Yahweh commanded Adam to make certain that business owners were provided and supplied with the necessary principles to make responsible decisions. The laws of Yahweh are the necessary principles for business owners to make responsible decisions. The laws of Yahweh were intended as a general rule of action by which all businesses in the Garden of Eden were to operate.
Moreover, Adam was also commanded to teach or tutor all business owners in the Garden of Eden, as well as the inhabitants of the land, to keep the commandments of Yahweh always, which is in accordance with Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 29, which reads in part, Keep all my commandments always, that it might be well with them and with their children forever. Keeping the commandments of Yahweh always will make our businesses do well, not only for us, but also for our children forever and ever. Even the simple-minded in business will be wise and his business sure if he keeps the laws of Yahweh according to Psalm chapter 19, verse 7, which reads, the law of Yahweh is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of Yahweh is sure, making wise the simple. Only the laws of Yahweh provide the moral strength needed for all businesses, whether public or private, to stand fast forever, according to Psalm chapter 111, verses 7 and 8 which reads in part, All his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever and are done in truth and uprightness. If all activities, undertakings, transactions, and businesses were conducted in truth and uprightness, the laws of Yahweh, they would stand fast forever and ever. But because business owners refuse to keep the laws of Yahweh, there is global destruction throughout the business world. Thus, to keep the Garden of Eden, or to make it sure, Adam was commanded to ensure it with moral strength that would secure it forever. The same moral strength that Yahweh commanded Adam to keep in the Garden of Eden then is the same moral strength that the second Adam, Yahweh ben Yahweh, is commanding us to keep today. Next week, we will continue with the second commandment that Yahweh gave to man, Adam, which was to keep the Garden of Eden. I bear witness to you today that the Messiah, Yahweh ben Yahweh, is here. I bear witness to you today that the Mahdi is here. I bear witness to you today that Shiloh is here. I bear witness to you today that the great light is here. I bear witness to you today that the Grand Master of the Celestial Lodge Architect of the universe is here. I bear witness to you today that the enlightened one is here. I bear witness to you today that the one all religion has been speaking of for over 6,000 years is here. Thank you for listening and join us next week as we continue our discussion of the commandments of Yahweh. Most people are not aware of the fact that America is in the Bible. She is cryptically called Babylon, Revelation 18.2. In 1986, Yahweh, Ben Yahweh, sent the president, vice president, his cabinet, every senator, and congressman, 
the book Yahweh Judges America, which warned them of the inevitable destruction of America. This book explains all that the prophets said would come upon America in the day of judgment. You can now read what Yahweh ben Yahweh told the government over 10 years ago. To get a copy of Yahweh Judges America, call the number on your screen today. Who is worthy? Who is worthy to open the book? Who is worthy to open the book and loose the seals thereof? And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters. At the end of time of evil rule, the Anointed One, the Messiah, shall appear. In 1979, Yahweh Ben Yahweh came to Miami and became the spiritual leader and founder of the nation of Yahweh. Although he took a vow of poverty, in seven years he guided the nation to amass a $250 million empire. Under his direction, the nation of Yahweh has grown to encompass disciples, followers, and supporters in over 1,300 cities within the U.S. and 16 foreign countries. Yahweh Ben Yahweh is bringing about changes in the lives of individuals and is giving the world the keys to success in life, politically, economically, educationally, socially, and spiritually. We are discussing the key to unfulfilled prophecy concerning Yahweh dealing with Israel in the near future. Jeremiah chapter 23 verses 7 and 8. The day is coming when we, Israel, will no longer identify ourselves with the exodus from Egypt, but rather with the return of all Hebrew Israelites from worldwide captivity. The Messiah, Yahweh ben Yahweh, has been set up as the true shepherd. Behold, Yahweh ben Yahweh, even Yahweh ben Yahweh himself is this day searching for his sheep and seeking us out, just as a shepherd seeks out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered. In like manner, Yahweh ben Yahweh is seeking out his sheep and is delivering us out of all places where we have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. Yahweh ben Yahweh himself is bringing his sheep out from the people and gathering us from the countries. And even more, Yahweh ben Yahweh is bringing us to our own land. As you can see, the mission of the Messiah is complex but yet clear. Yahweh ben Yahweh is seeking that which was lost and is bringing again that which was driven away and is binding up that which was broken and is strengthening that which was sick and Yahweh ben Yahweh himself is the one shepherd over us and he is feeding us with the commandments judgments laws and statutes of Yahweh as foretold in Ezekiel chapter 34 verses 11 through 13 and verse 23. Yahweh has given the Messiah, Yahweh ben Yahweh, unlimited authority over the nations. Know of a surety that the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh comes. 
and unto him Shiloh shall the gathering of the people be. Remember that this is the morning of the third day, and I shall rise again. I am the resurrection. It, all of prophecy tells you that I shall rise again. It's all about that. Luke chapter 2, verse 34. No doubt about it. Again, I love you forever. Bless you forever. I remind you once again, my associates are children of the light. <laughs> That just brings uh, laughter to my heart, to my soul, to realize that at last, I have those of you that love peace. And I only want to be in the presence of those of you that love peace. I love you forever. Shalom Aleikum. We, the children of Israel, are referred to as the lost sheep. And our Messiah, Yahweh ben Yahweh, is also known as the Good Shepherd, for he is gathering together all Hebrew Israelites from worldwide captivity. His searching in this dark and cloudy day is a complex task, but Yahweh ben Yahweh shall be successful in bringing all the children of Israel back into one fold. Thank you for joining us in the universe of Yahweh. And now, we'd like to invite all of you to pray with us as we turn to the east with outstretched hands and say a prayer to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, the Lord's Prayer in Hebrew. Come, let us pray. Tefillah, Ave Nu Shabbat Shemayim, Yikardesh Shemayaka, Tavo Malkuteaka, Yiase Rizonka, Kivash Shemayim Kain Ba'aret, Et Lekum Kukainu, Tain La Nu Hayom, Uslak La Nu. Ah Kati Ainu, Kimosha Soul King, Gamanaknu, La Koteam Lanu, Veal Tefi Ainu, Lade Nisayom, Kim Kal Seinu, Mihara, Kilaka, Hamamlaha, Veha Givara, Veha Tiferet, Leolame, Olamin Sila. We thank thee, O Yahweh, O living and eternal King, who has so mercifully restored our souls within us. Sila. Praise Yahweh, and always remember that the Father Yahweh and His Son Yahweh bin Yahweh love you, and your host loves you too. Shalom Aleichem! To order the companion book to the series, The Messiah Revealed, call 1-800-967-PEACE. That's 1-800-967-7337. And when you call, Ask about the special discount on the crucifixion of the Messiah. Videos of this program are available. When ordering, please refer to the program number on the screen. You can now access the divine mind of Yahweh ben Yahweh on the internet at the address on the screen. <laughs>